event that just concluded, we had MVL showing that not only was he not ready for Magnus, he wasn't even ready for Rajabov because Rajabov took him to school. I mean, he won one game, and then Rajabov just stomped, just like stomp, 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 stomp. Actually, Rajabov won, MVL won, then Rajabov, Rajabov, Rajabov. And it was just done, just done. Uh, who am I going for in the park championships? I'm definitely going for Myth. Myth is my guy, although he got blanked by a superior player, 2-0. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, anybody could win that event. But let's get back to this big event here. We'll talk about the park championship uh, another time for sure. But this one we're talking about right now is this event that just concluded. Now, you guys have probably seen the event. You probably had some, some insights. I'm going to try to give you different insights. I want you to have a big pawn moment or several big pawn moments on the stream. So I'm going to try to get to a couple of things. Here goes the first one. This position right here, this is a game that Rajabal played against Vashi Lagravo, his first win against him. And this position, I wanted to bring it up because if you've seen, my, if you saw my last stream from before, then you know I showed a crazy position with, which featured a king march. And it was Black doing a king march that ultimately failed, but we talked about how this is not something that's that infrequent. Now, most of our games, it's not gonna happen, but at a very high level, thank you, Jay, at a very high level, these things happen more and more and more, and they happen more often than you think. So when you see it happen, you say, mental note, sometimes I can march my king up the board, despite the fact that it looks like I'm gonna get mated. Okay, nobody wants to get mated, but you can look, all right? so. Here in this position, white was already won a pawn. Clearly, seven pawns to six. And black's pawn structure is very much compromised. So black has very little hope uh, if this goes straight into an endgame. There are weak pawns everywhere. But black does have one move, and that is bishop to f5 check. And this move was black's hope that maybe, just maybe, there's going to be counterplay. The expectation for black is white's going to back up and bury this rook for some time, and maybe from here, black could look for some chances with this buried rook really trying to resolve itself. But white, being a gangster like Timur Rajabov, Timur said, uh-uh, no, 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 no can do. I'm not backing up, I'm stepping into the fire. Into the flames, he said, into the flames, king up the board. You know, somebody on the last stream has said to me, uh, these kind of things, they don't happen that often. Well, I said, train your creativity because they do. Expand your mind. And Rajabal was able to look at this position and say, I don't think I'm going to be in that much danger. Now, after you see the move rook d5 land on the board, you might be like, ho, 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 wait a minute. Another rook is going to land on the b8 square. This bishop is ready to come to c2 as needed or drop back to e6. A rook a5 action, you absolutely might get mated. How dare you put your king up on the b3 square like this? And you don't want to play a move like a3 or even a4 because this bishop is going to exploit the weaknesses that you created. Right about now, a lot of people would get desperate and play a move like a4. After bishop e6, say, you know what? Let me hide on the a3 square. But even here, this position is not that easy because after c5, this pawn could end up here creating some issues. This rook is coming here. And all of a sudden, it looks like, where is, why is black getting any kind of counterplay? Like, what is all this? What is all this? This is so, this is so sharp right now. Like, what's going on? Obviously, you don't want to just put your king here because rook goes to a5 or rook and the rook can follow, actually. So, yeah, you don't, like, what are you supposed to do? Well, your man Rajabov, like I said, gangster all the way. He had it all under control because look what he did. C4. He said, first of all, let me just drop this move on you. No fear. Like zero fear in this position. By the way, who wouldn't be afraid of this check? <laughs> I mean, for starters, you can't play King C3 because of Rook D3 check and uh, snack time disco in your face. So... Who wouldn't be scared of Rook B8? Like, you're not scared of Rook B8? His plan after Rook B8 was, 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 what? King to A4 was the plan. King to A4. 
Now, you just took your king and separated it from the rest of your army with two rooks, count them, two rooks, and a bishop thinking, it's got to be snack time. It's got to be mate. How many people would play chess like this? How many of you would play chess like this? Let's be real. When you see it and you look at it, you go, I guess it's okay. I guess I'm safe. But not, you're not going to automatically just be like, boom, let me just chase my king of the board. Now, by the way, you're talking Nigel Shortstock Munger. I hear you. Nigel ran up the board with his king when his pieces had the entire position on lockdown. Okay? Black was on complete knockdown in that lockdown in that game between Short and Timmon. Famous game between Short and Timmon where the King March occurred. We've gone over that game on the stream. If you've never seen Short versus Timmon, just Google Short Timmon King March. One of the most extraordinary king marches you've ever seen, where the king marches all the way up the board to deliver mate to the other king despite having enemy pieces all over the place. Well, it turns out those enemy pieces were on lockdown. They couldn't move. They weren't, they weren't attacking the king. So the king was able to just calmly waltz up the board and get to the 8-6 square. That's a famous game. But in this position, I'm sorry, in this position, black is the one who's got all these active pieces that I'm showing right now in red. All right? Yes, it's a Batman shirt. That's what's up. Batman is dark night time. All right. So this position, you're, you're, you're going to be scared. And you're playing one of the greatest tacticians in the world in Maxime Vachier Le Grave. And it turns out that the king is just safe. There's no way to get at this king. I, I mean, this guy, this is guts. Straight up, y'all. This is guts with a lot of calculation to say, I'm good. You're not going to get me. I don't see it. I'm not worried about it. A lot of us would be terrified. Let's be clear. A lot of us in this position would just be absolutely terrified. So after rook to d5, the move c4. King to b3, first of all. Let's be clear. He moved this king to b3. And after rook d5, c4. And then rook check on d3. You can't go back up the board time. But like we showed, king to a4. And there's just no way to deliver mate. There's no easy attacking lines. There's no, there's just, the king is just going to chill on a4, separated from its army with no worries. Cowboy Tim Tom, first time, good time. Come on in. All right, the water's fine. This position here, let's be real. I mean, this is a revelation. And this is the kind of stuff... You know, when I, again, when I show these king marches on the stream, oh, yeah, we don't know. If you don't see these ideas in your actual game, you don't have the confidence to play them. That's why you go over extraordinary ideas, because in your actual game, you just, you're, you're like, I don't know, I'm going to get killed. Okay, sometimes you might get killed, just marching your king up the board. But there are a lot of times like this one where you can be just safe. All right, now, a move like bishop to d7 being suggested actually is no worries. White's going to park the king on the a5 square. So white can just play chess, let you get this move off. No problem. <laughs> Parked, protected, safe. That's why people want to get rid of their own pawns, because pawns get in the way of pieces. If you could only get rid of that pawn, it would be over, Rover. But white's like, I'm hiding inside your camp, and you can't do anything about it. Incredible position. Just incredible position here all right just just k4 uh we did talk about that the match with myth and yes i saw him get blank 2-0 so we got work to do to try to help his game but he did play a superior opponent who played very well all right king to a4 so let's so this is the position here and because you can't get at the king it means you're just down a pawn and your position sucks as we said, the pawn structure is terrible. White's pawn structure is far superior. Black's pawn structure is awful. And he went on to win a nice game. King f7, b3. And now he can hide on the dark squares all he wants. All he wants, either here or here. Check this out. Rook to d8. King a5. I mean, you, a lot, again, a lot, a lot of people might be like, let's just back up to a3 and chill there and figure out what to do after that. Nah, what do we need to hide for? He just proved this gangsterness, his true gangster colors by playing king to a5. A6, yeah, you want me to take your a pawn? 
Duh, never gonna happen. That's my shield. That's my shield. That's right, Tom the Awesome. That partner, that King A5 is a flex. It's like, got you. What? What? I'm not scared of you. King up, and then he drew up the bishop back, and he said, okay, let me just reset. We're not taking a pawn anyway. And let's just start a different strategy. Massage the guy a little bit, and then hit him with G4. Get your piece out of there. Thank you, Tisco Tasker. Much appreciated. Bishop to D3, no problem. Let's gang up on the H pawn. Rook to E1, looking for the E pawn. You can have it. How many of you would be scared right now? Takes. He just gave her the E pawn. Now there's a little something, something on this line. B4, shut the front door. Come on. No fear in this man. No, I mean, no fear. What is up? Takes, takes. You got the pawn. We don't care. We got the breakthrough. And we have a runner. We have a runner. Uh-oh, this one's flying. Here comes the other one and another one. Biggie Smalls. Rook at five. Let's go. Hit the pawn on E7. You got to defend. Check. Get out of there. And push. And push. And run. And run. And run. What? Let me grab a pawn so that I can say I'm up a pawn finally. But it's not the quantity of pawns in chess. It's the quality. This one here is a beast. Rook down. Let's try to promote. Ooh, a blockading rook. That's nice. Let's go after your E pawn now because once we get rid of this rook, then this bishop, I'm sorry, blockading bishop, uh, this bishop is going to go. King D7 played, and what happened next? What happened next? What happened next? Turn your sound down because here it comes. Boom! Wake up. Wake up and smell the coffee. You're about to get served, son. Look at this king. Just chilling like a villain over here. <laughs> That's nasty. Like, I'm just I'm just hanging out. It's like the king is castled on the other side of the board in the other player's camp. It's like, I'm safe. Y'all take care of business. We're not even paying attention to the king. We've been we have not been talking about this king like for a while because the king just found a safe spot to chill. It's like, I'm just chilling. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm over here. Guys, take care of business. I got this. Rook takes, rook takes, and now finally he said, ooh, 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 wait a minute, let me pay attention to that king. I might get a mate off. No can do, son. Check. And another check. Blocks. And check. And now nothing to do because any move you make with your king, there's going to be a check and pick off this rook. And that's it. Game over. Finished and done. Woo! Amazing. Amazing, again, the revelation of the king marching up the board, parking itself on A5, and then just chilling. The understanding, again, this is not something you see every day. So when I see stuff that's exceptional, I understand that the player is playing by conceptualization, the understanding, and not necessarily the pattern. You see, because there's a lot of patterns in chess. Oh, yeah, we can sacrifice a bishop on h7. We know that pattern. We know the queen sack on h7 followed by rook h1, rook h8 mate. We know those patterns. Smothered mate patterns. But the next level, folks, is when a player can look at a position and say, this is not a pattern I've seen, but it's an idea I have seen. And I think in this position, I'm good. So the idea of putting the king on a5, that's, that's superior ideas, right? This is, you can argue there are a lot of patterns in chess and that it's all about patterns. I had an argument a long time ago in, in a park in Brooklyn about this, this idea. Patterns, yes, they're extremely important in chess. No question about it. But this, right, where were we? We were back here. This, what Rajabov did here, conforms to no standard pattern. What he did is he understood, he looked at the position and said, I don't think that he has the pieces to mate me. I don't see it, how he's going to organize his forces. Actually, it's not that he doesn't have the pieces to mate. He has pieces that can mate you. I mean, bishop, two bishops, sorry, two rooks and a bishop can get it done easily. Two rooks alone can get it done. But this particular structure, the way he's looking at the position, he said, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't see the construction and controlling the dark squares, and I don't see the angles of attack 
working out, even despite this move rook to d5, which suggests very powerfully that the angles of attack will work out. Wouldn't you like to play like us? I mean, seriously, y'all. Wouldn't y'all in this position just want to play a nice, safe move like king to c1? I mean, just chill. You don't want your rook to be buried, but you figure you'll solve that problem a little bit later. Maybe you push your pawn, get your rook out somewhere. Maybe you push this pawn, slide the king up, and you're going to be safe on that square, right? You would think. Of course, when they play a5, you're like, hmm, can't quite push the pawn right now. How do I get this rolling properly? So this, for him to be bold, boldness is one thing, but to have the depth to be able to play king b3 here, that is good stuff. And yes, Kildeer, Timur is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. 